All right, in this video, we are gonna do number five from the 2022 Calc BC exam. And it's kind of like the area volume, but also improper integral and integration by parts problem. So let's see what we got. Uh, figures one and two, I didn't show figure two because I don't need it for this part. Figures one and two shown to the side illustrate regions in the first quadrant associated with the graphs of y equals one over x and y equals one over x squared respectively. In figure one, we're going to let R be the region bounded by the graph of Y equals one over X, the X axis, and the vertical lines X equals one and X equals five. And then in figure two, we'll worry about that when we need it. Part A is to find the area of region R. So R is going to be uh, our one over X curve. And we're going from one to five. We're just finding area, right? So that's going to be the integral from one to five of one over X DX. Integral from one to five, one over X DX. The antiderivative of one over x is the natural log of the absolute value of x. Um, we know that we're between one and five, so we know that that's positive, but you know, whatever, we put the absolute value. Then when we plug in five, we know the absolute value of five is five, so we don't need absolute value, so we get the natural log of five minus the natural log of one. The natural log of one is zero, or you could think of it as condensing the logs and you get the natural log of five over one. Either way, we get natural log of five is our answer, and we're moving on. All right, R again, so the same deal, is the base of a solid. For the solid, each x at, e uh, for the solid, at each x, the cross section perpendicular to the x axis is a rectangle with area given by x e to the x over five, find the volume of the solid. So this is really nice. We are given the, vol the area of a cross section and to find the volume, all we need to do is integrate that. So we're just gonna integrate from one to five, this area of a cross section. So x e to the x over five dx. Now, this is an integration by parts problem. So we need to pick a u and a dv. Generally speaking, you try to pick u so that the derivatives will go to zero, but you also always have to be um, cognizant of the fact that you need to integrate dv. So if you can't figure out how to integrate dv, that can't be dv. But in this case, I'm gonna let u equal x. I'm gonna let dv equal e to the x over five. Now I'm gonna find du to be dx and v, so there should be a one fifth, so I'm gonna put a five e to the x over five. You can work that one out with u substitution on the side if you need to. Uh, you can actually just let u equal e to the x over five and it will work out for you, but that's what we have for v. Now integration by parts is uv, so it's going to be x times five e to the x over five, so like that. And then uh, we're evaluating from one to five minus the integral of v du, so 5e to the x over 5, and then dx. All right, so now I'm going to use the fundamental theorem on this first part. So uh, I plug in 5, and I get 25e to the first. I plug in 1, that's going to give me, so minus, plugging in 1 is 5e to the 1 fifth. Okay, that's the first part. Now minus, I still need to integrate this thing, so there should have been a one fifth, so there's another five. So we have five times five is 25, e to the x over five. And then we're going from one to five, and we're gonna sub in. So we still have this, you know, purple parentheses. Um, and then minus quantity, I plug in five, I get 25 e. And then minus, I plug in one, I get uh, 25 e to the one fifth. Now, if you look at, I think you can leave this here, but I'm a little uncomfortable leaving this here because uh, there's like a lot of stuff that cancels. Well, at least two things that cancel. So I went ahead and I simplified this. The 25e minus 25e is gone. You have negative 5e to the one fifth minus negative. So plus 25e to the one fifth. So overall, this just becomes 20e to the one fifth. So I chose to simplify that one. I think it's a good move. And it's like not that hard. So it's not the same as when there are all the decimals and you're trying to avoid screwing that up. I simplified that. I have no regrets. All right, moving on. Now, find the volume of the solid generated when region W is revolved about the x-axis. So W is figure two. It's the unbounded region between the graph of y equals one over x squared and the x-axis that lies to the right of the vertical line. So we're dealing with one over x squared and we're just to the right of the line. So this is gonna be an improper integral because our upper bound will be infinity. So let's set it up. So volume is 
uh, pi, the integral from three to infinity, and then we're just gonna do like big R squared because there's no inner curve. So we get one over X squared squared. So this, we have to use the proper notation. They're, they're big on notation with this one. So we have to change it to the limit as B approaches infinity of pi, the integral from three to B, and then one over X squared squared is one over X to the fourth, and I made it X to the negative four so I can integrate it more easily by just reversing the power rule. All right, limit B approaches infinity pi plus one times the reciprocal gives me negative one third X to the negative third. And now we're going from three to B. Remember, we, we can't put infinity as our upper bound there. That's not proper notation. We will lose points for that. So don't do that. Um, equals the limit as B approaches infinity. So as long as I'm writing B, I'm going to have to write the limit. And I'm now using the fundamental theorem. So I substitute B and I get negative one over three B cubed. I think that's the best way to write it. I mean, you could write negative one third B to the negative third. It's more obvious what happens as B goes to infinity if you rewrite it as one over three B cubed. So that's why I did that. Then minus, I have to plug in three. I'm also going to rewrite this one. So this is going to be uh, it's negative one third times uh, three to the negative third. So it's basically negative one over three to the fourth, which is negative one over 81. All right, so what's happening here? As B approaches infinity, one over three B cubed just goes to zero. So that gives you zero. And then you have minus negative one over 81. So don't forget the pi. And our final answer here is pi over 81. That's our volume. So finite volume, even though it's an infinite region, I've always found that at least interesting, if not just straight up bizarre. That's actually the entire problem. So I'm going to stop this here. I'll be back in another video to do uh, number six from this particular year. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.